I'm gonna treat you to some gear candy while you're uh, doing your thing. Check this out. Hopefully this works. You hear that? I do. Are we just gonna talk over that the whole time? So I made that in uh, 1996. On the bass? Were you slapping the bass for that, or was that no, just like that a... is that is me using a tracker? So like before, people would regularly set up a studio in their home and record stuff hmm. live. They would use trackers, and predominantly it would be used for like dance, EDM, that sort of thing. Right. Um, but there were a handful of folks, myself included, who would just use it for a little bit of everything, and so going through an old drive and I stumbled across a gold mine <laughs> of all this like super old stuff that I did like 20 almost 30 years ago was this like JP in the 808s or what was this? Yeah. yeah yeah this is totally like 808s and 909s and yeah, let me see if I can find one of the good like let's see what this one does I'm excited this is exciting yeah, you better believe it. Uh, this one is from 1998. Taking you back. Ooh, taking you back to 98. Classic. This one, that's literally an 808. Yeah. And this is mostly me screwing around. Oh. oh yeah it's got that I think punk this was, on it I think this was like a Halloween tune I was working on my favorite though my favorite out of like all the things in here let's see if I can find one my favorite was guitar because it was just like the crappiest guitar sample you could <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know I've never done one Nope, not that. I know I've got one in here. That's like slow jams. Oh yeah, I did all sorts of stuff, man. Slow jams. All right, this has got to be one. Nope, fast jams. <laughs> all the speeds of jams. Were you were you developing ringtones for Motorola? No, you know, you know, you know what? A bunch. I was telling the story this morning. That's part of like why I bring it up. Um. But a bunch of the stuff that I did, remember back in the day <laughs> when you used to get pirated software and it would come with like the cheesiest like video game type music playing in the background while it illegally installed software on your computer? Yeah, no, but carry no, on. No. no, that was just me. <laughs> I, I think it was, that, but it was, I, I remember, you know what I remember that made me think of was when you're downloading a song on like Napster or LimeWire mm -hmm. and it would get like halfway through and then it would like start screeching to all hell. Oh, yeah. That was the worst. Oh, yeah. Yes. But anyway, carry on. Well, the, I, I made a bunch of songs that got included. I didn't ask for them to be included. I just I actually came across an installer once that started playing one of my songs that I created. I was like, oh, I guess my stuff's being used for pirated software. now. That seems on brand. Was that part of your anti sec growth strategy? No, that was that was all anti no sec. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what this one has to offer. I was not expecting that. Yeah, so you can get like wave samples. It's gonna do it again, here it comes. Are you getting the pan too? The pan? Yeah, it'll pan between left and right. No, I'm not. Just getting the whole thing. Oh. And... That's unfortunate. Cause that's... Oh, so you've got a like left to right action going on in your head. Oh yeah. Oh, not me. Oh, I do have it set to stereo. Weird. 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 I feel like when you take Declan, I'm assuming at one time in your life you're gonna take him to Seattle, and you guys are gonna go to the music museum, and there's like just a bunch of like random music stuff that you can go play. You could probably spend like a whole weekend there. We spent like 
four hours at um southland like fish not fish creek park the one that's like south glenmore park mm. um they have a little uh section there there were those students uh who were murdered not too long ago um who all went to ufc and they were either in the right. music program or they were part of uh part of a band or both and uh they've set up all these instruments like in the park that you can play and like we just walked around banging on random <laughs> instruments and it was just it was just the three of us and there was this guy sitting not too far away who was just like totally taken in the jams it's pretty it's pretty funny I, i'm telling you have you been to seattle oh yeah yeah have you gone to that music museum yep oh i feel like that's like your your spot Yep. Uh, also, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Where is that? In Cleveland? Cleveland. Have you been to that? Yep. Pretty sick? Oh, yeah. I mean, mm. I haven't been to it for years, and there's many more legends who have been added that I would love to go see. So, we'll Did you again. did you do the Nirvana exhibit? Or was it there yet? Uh, I, think, I think so. I'm just trying to... Rec- it's been a few years, so... Yeah, because I did... I went to the Nirvana exhibit twice uh at the seattle music one like in the I, same day like you got to know like we're going back no, no going i went back. i went i went like separate trips and i went to oh, it. okay um i think i went to it twice anyway but the uh when i went there i was like 20 steps in and i've been there for like an hour i was like reading everything i was like <laughs> totally taking in the experience and my entire family was at the end like what the hell are you doing let's go <laughs> like okay we saw a couple guitars some old ripped jeans some written down lyrics okay cool let's move on and i'm like it's, i'm it's totally like every time i go to uh planet hollywood yeah anytime i go, and they got like we, we went to a bunch in in uh, spain we had mm. a bad we had a bad food experience at a place in Spain. So we had a few days where we just went to like places we knew. Yeah. And uh, so we went to a few, they, they have a surprising number of those in Hollywood or in, in Hollywood, in Spain. The only one I've been to is in New York, but yes, carry on. You're so in we Spain. went to like three or four and uh, I just like walked around reading all the guitars and looking at all the like memorabilia they had and Steph's like, what are you doing? she's like i'm here to eat and have a drink so we can go see spain and i'm like yeah but there's a guitar from mick jagger on his third tour (laughs) i love reading i love reading those things like i i could yeah i don't know i'm I'm always fascinated with nirvana just like their rise the fall um dave grohl like dave grohl's awesome dave grohl i i gotta get that book he's got a new book out that's on my winter reading list when i get to hibernating that is that's something i'm gonna definitely be hitting up hey uh i told you i shot a guy with dave Grohl once right you shot a guy yeah no <laughs> what <laughs> dave dave Grohl and i are accomplices in shooting we uh when i worked at the radio station in ontario we crashed another radio station's like weekend event mm. um so they used to have edge fest which is edge fest I, that was one of my first concerts blink when blink uh headlined it yeah so yeah. we uh we used to crash edge fest all the time we would get in with our media credentials and then all the bands loved us just because of the type of station we were we weren't you know the we weren't the prissy sort of we need to interview everybody type like we were the hard rockers who would go out drinking with people so we uh we would commonly get pulled up on stage just as media and so i was with the morning show guy he got pulled up on stage i went up on stage with him and uh he had a bb gun a board and a nail and he was a tattoo artist and piercer and he had a tongue piercing so he took out his tongue piercing nailed his tongue to a board and then had dave Grohl shoot him with the bb gun so the two of us shot him with the bb gun on stage at Edgefest. that's fascinating how has this never come up we have spent it's hundreds not, of hours know. together and that <laughs> i, I never thought to bring that up <laughs> i have a lot of stupid stories <laughs> Working in uh, radio for 10 years, I have a lot of stupid stories. And, and how come you haven't reached out to Dave Grohl to reminisce on this moment and get him on the pod? Hey, remember like, that where, time we shot a guy? Where, where you been, JP? He'd, he'd probably be like, you know, which time? <laughs> yeah, well, he's currently promoting a book and like one of the most famous people in the world. And, okay, here's a question. Is Dave Grohl the coolest person in the world? Hmm. He's pretty cool. 
I think it depends on your definition of cool, but like he's pretty down to earth. He's a rocker. He's very open about things that I think you should be open about. He is definitely a fan favorite. Like that whole thing that he did with that little girl who's a who's a drummer and the back and forth that they had over social mm. media. And then he brought her to a concert and she actually I don't know if you saw, but she drummed at a recent concert for them. I didn't um, see that, but that's yeah, so on just, brand. Yeah, yeah, it was just so amazing. Like all the stuff he does. And then like, I don't know, just, you know, he falls off stage, breaks his leg, comes back out, sitting in a chair, <laughs> finishes the set like this. He's total rocker, but like the not the like typical, you know, drugs alcohol blah 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 right like he is just a good dude who happens to be a rocker and i was thinking i saw some video i don't know if it was on tiktok or somewhere else where they did that drive-by by that crazy church group did you see that when they were on top of a mm-hmm. bus or whatever and they were i can't remember exactly what that was but he's so badass i okay let me reverse the question then uh you want a better answer you ask a better question as our friend sonia funk uh, <laughs> uh says Who's cooler than Dave Grohl? Oh, I don't know. I think of people like um, Jimmy Fallon. Not that he's necessarily Ooh. cooler than him, but he does some pretty cool things with he's some pretty, pretty cool. cool people. Pretty cool. I, I like Jimmy Fallon. And maybe he's just, pretty down to earth, too. Like, he's not. the Maybe most. Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds might yeah. be. He might be in the same stratosphere as David Grohl. Oh, yeah. Ryan Reynolds is like, he's up there for his sarcasm and wit. Like there's different reasons that these people are dropped at the top of that, that top echelon of cool people. Yeah. Anyway, that's, did you see, did did you see that uh, Ryan Reynolds and Will Ferrell recently switched the show that they went on? No, I didn't. Yeah. So Jimmy, Jimmy Fallon and uh, uh, the other one. Jimmy Fallon. Kimmel? Uh, yes. Kimmel and Fallon? Yeah. Yeah. So, th- so they, uh, Reynolds is supposed to be on one and Will Ferrell the other, but they showed up to each other's without telling the host. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, yeah, he couldn't be here. He's running late. Couldn't make it. So I said I'd fill in for him. That sounds staged, but I'm sure it was funny. Yeah. I, I would have said staged until I watched the video and like you could tell that both of the hosts, like maybe it was staged, but they just didn't let the hosts know. But both of the hosts looked like legitimately surprised. Like, <laughs> like I'm, what is what is Ryan I'm not Reynolds prepared doing? for this? <laughs> I just introduced Will Ferrell, and yeah, like Jimmy Kimmel had to like throw out his questions because he had his list of questions. He's like, I can't ask you any of these because it's all about Will Ferrell's stuff, and he just throws it away. That's funny. Well, now that we've gone through our list of man crushes, uh, what else is on your mind today? <laughs> You got any more beats you want to throw out? <laughs> well, let, let me let me let me see if I can uh, let me see if I can grab. I I really need you to hear the guitars because they were just so good. That's not it. <laughs> that was. I feel like I was in like a um, Space Invaders or something. Man, there's so many in here. You just made them. Yes. <laughs> Oh yes, that was the guitar sound. So that's you on the guitar? No. So what is, is a, it? It is a sampled guitar. So think of it like this. You get a sample that it just makes a certain sound and then you can control the pitch and the volume and the pan. So you, you just like up and with your spinning kind dialies, of least, kind of? Well, no. So this is <laughs> this is the interesting part. It's so old. It's kind of like Think of it like an Excel spreadsheet in mm. column a, it all goes from like one to 32. Let's just say it goes from one to 32. Okay. So column a is just one sound of your guitar and right. you have to put in which cells in column a, that sound will show up. And then you have to do the same in column B and it might be a drum sound or a different guitar sound or a bass. And you have to put in like where it will show up, what the pitch will be, what the volume will be. It's basically like a giant spreadsheet of music. That sounds like my worst nightmare, putting that together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, and, and, the, and the story I was telling this morning is like, we were, we were talking about um, passion and, and mm. purpose and, and learning. And I just said, you know, 
I had no interest. Like I, I picked up the piano very young uh, and I had no interest in formal learning. I was, you know, pushed towards formal learning, tried it for a time or two <laughs> and it was not working out. So stepped away. You dabbled, dabbled. In yeah. The I, I, I dabbled as like a, you know, six, seven year old who cried when he didn't want to do it. Hmm. So we gave up. Um, but man, did I put a ton of effort into learning how to do this in this like spreadsheet format. And like, this is probably more difficult to get good at than reading music, but I put in so many hours <laughs> into doing this. And so we were just talking about, you know, how much effort people put into learning in different environments and when you can tap into passion, blah, blah, blah. And I just said, look, like, you know, this is, this is something that I was a busy, busy person. Like I was into every sport as like a teenager. I was into everything and I was in a band and I was doing this and I would always find time to learn how to do this and to, to play in the band um, because I was passionate about it. And so all of my I'm busy disappeared because it was something I wanted to do versus something I was being told to do. That's such an interesting thing. And I, it made me think about if I had put as much time and effort and hours into like calculus as I did into crash bandicoot, <laughs> where, <laughs> where may I have ended up? I don't know. I don't know. But that crash bandicoot money is, that's lucrative. Well, and so here's the thing. There's some other kid. I mean, even that I didn't necessarily wasn't passionate about, but video games in general, like I spent mm. a lot of hours on video games, which I believe helped me become a better problem solver. It shaped my reward system. It, you know, maybe persevere through things like it, it taught me a bunch of other stuff, but then there's some guy out there that went out and invented Fortnite, And I guarantee he came from the same place we did, you know, screwing around with the Xprel Xprel. <laughs> Excel <laughs> spreadsheets for music or, you know, playing video games or whatever. Well, like, how many, I can think of at least three two dimensional games that are very similar to Fortnite. And Fortnite was just like, Hey, instead of having just a thing where you run around and can like build up or dig down or whatever, maybe you can also pair it with a first person shooter game. And now you're actually like competing. And then now all of a sudden it's like this massive hit. Did, did Fort, I had this discussion with Lyndon one day. We should actually have him on here one day to kind of break it down for us. Like, so here's the thing. I was helping him do his homework the other day and we were, we were researching Yellowknife and the climate in Yellowknife. And I could see the physical pain on his face <laughs> trying to come up with three things about the climate in Yellowknife. <laughs> They were like right on the Wikipedia page. Like it's, it's hot in the summer. It's cold in the winter and it doesn't rain much. Boom, done. But like, he just like did not want to do it. And it was, it was painful. And I'm sitting there going like, if this was a question about what's the climate at lazy Lake and Fortnite, he would have done a 20 minute YouTube video on it and explained it like every component of it. Mm -hmm. But like, it's all that where passion lies. Yeah. So like, why would it well anyway i don't know i don't know what our school system is or isn't anymore but like i want him to follow that like if that's what you love and that's what makes you tick and that's how you connect the dots on things um I, it's just kind of changed my whole view on like learning and life not just necessarily that moment but like when you're passionate about something like like math give me a give me a complex math equation and i'm like glazed over Give me like 15 years worth of baseball statistics and ask me to find out who the best player was. And I'm like, I'm in. But it's well, what's, what's funny too, is like a lot of that sort of stuff that it, we're being asked to do now, it's pre-programmed into like an Excel formula or a database structure. And if you're not like, if you're not pursuing the database piece, then you're probably going to be someone who uses those databases or a calculator to figure out even the simplest of math. Like I understand there is significant value in understanding the framework and how it works. And like, you need to know how to add, you know, two eighteen and 26. Like it's just, sure. you need to know, but it doesn't mean you're going to actually use that. So yeah, but like, e if you even can put that, the frameworks like, around those fundamental skills are important. Like, but even with Lyndon, like, 
if it's more than three numbers, like if it's 1,282 minus 1,351, that doesn't work, but whatever. Oh, flip it's the a numbers. negative number. Yeah, sure. It's a negative number. He would just be like, they would just, I would just use a calculator. Well, I'm like, but it's like, it's easy. Like just, but like, it doesn't seem like that's getting ingrained in kids mm-hmm. anymore. Like just use the calculator, but like you still need those fundamental skills. Like, they're going to come in handy somewhere. Yeah. It, but like to your point about the lake in Fortnite, like maybe lazy lake, you, lazy lake. I could just <laughs> call it the lake, whatever the lake's name is. Uh, you can still like, I feel like you can still teach that same framework that the mm-hmm. teacher is trying to drive towards and use a sort of fictitious place. And in fact, the fictitious place might drive the person to go and look deeper and find out other ways to associate the weather to different events that happen in the area. Well, and, and here's an idea for Fortnite. If you guys are tuning in, which I'm sure you are definitely, yeah, definitely. There's always at least one Fortnite. Why not? Why not start an educational program based on Fortnite? Like I'm, I could see it right now. Like you take all of the, the weather and the climate and the, like you could make an entire education program that kids would be invested in, interested in. You get your curriculum. engineering degree from Fortnite. You could. Build legitimate structures. Honestly, like if I could have taken applied math baseball in grade 12, I probably could have got the same, like I probably would have got more out of that from like a, a math competency perspective than whatever the hell that I did. Well, and look at all they're doing now with like the Amazon in uh, in the NHL, and I mean, there's so many books about baseball and numbers and the math behind the game, and yeah, everything's numbers. You. Yeah. So anyway, everything that was is a, numbers. You have a song. Oh, no, that's everything is awesome. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's funny. What else? What else you got? Not much. I'm uh I've listened to Jamie's episode a couple times this week. Yeah. I listened to episode two and then I was like, I should go back and listen to episode one. So I listened to episode one again. Uh which means I'm, you know, uneven now, so I'm gonna have to listen to episode two again to even things out. Is that how your brain works? You gotta even yeah, it out? It's my it's my O C D. It uh that was that was fun. That was fun recording with him. Um I don't know, like there's been so many highlights of the season, but I'm I'm always going to look back fondly. There's episodes of, like along the way that we've gone, like or moments in episodes, like sometimes it's a full episode. Sometimes it's just like this striking moment where you're like, man, that was deep or insightful or just a good feeling. Hi, Joe. What are you talking about? Yeah, we'll go for here. Why don't you come say hi? Just come say hi to JP. Bye. Just come say hi. Bye. No, come here. Don't please don't do that. Yeah, come here. Say hi. Uh, hi, Joey. <laughs> here, do you want to talk to JP for a minute? No. Uh, no, no. Hi. I know you don't want to talk to me, but uh, your dad's throwing the ears on you. <laughs> you done? <laughs> okay. That was a random little break brought to you by Jovi. <laughs> um <laughs> It is funny though when you get like fifty episodes in, which we're kind of closing in on um, rapidly. Just how quickly it goes by, and and there's just like just moments that stand out, and I, I just think the this this past episode of Jamie is going to be one of those that we'll always kind of have a, a soft spot for. I'm gonna have to get some. I'm gonna have to get some uh, soft music and a single tear down our face while we talk about that. <laughs> it's a very soft moment. But we're heading into the, the final stretch here. Five episodes to go. Six episodes to go. Yes, Joe. I'm going for the walk. Yeah, we're going a couple minutes. Just let me finish up. Okay. okay. I then go find out and then uh there are, are ah. they here? Yeah. Okay. Um yeah you're getting the real the real goods this week on chopping it up which yeah so six episodes left and I don't know if a lot of people know this, but we had grand ambitions this year of doing weekly chopping it ups. And then we went and got, you know, worked on getting certified as coaches instead. And that kind of took up all that <laughs> extra time. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think uh, we spent a little time chatting about how we can focus our efforts into what's meaningful. And I think we did a 
particularly good job of that this season with some pretty incredible episodes from some pretty incredible guests. Uh, and now we're looking for feedback would, as of today. Would you, would you describe this as like our serious actor season? Serious actor season. Sure. Is that what you would like? Is this our, what was a serious movie Will Ferrell made? I'm trying to think the one where he had the mustache, not Anchorman. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say the only one I could think of off the top of my head with a mustache is Anchorman. I was pondering that because I have gotten feedback from a couple of people now. Like they like the banter and the levity and the jokes and the laughing. And Mm -hmm. while I feel like that is layered in to a lot of what we've done still, um, we were, you know, we have taken a more serious type personal development approach this season. And, um, you know, I love the guests we've had. I, I think we've created some really amazing stuff that we, you know, we've gotten feedback is helping people, but you know, is there an opportunity for us to add a little more humor and, 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 and you know, some of the stuff that we started out with back into no. the show? Kill it. <laughs> Just all no. serious. <laughs> no, no opportunities to laugh ever. No, I think we did. Uh, I think we did a good thing getting, I will say, semi serious because we certainly enjoyed some laughs along the way. But, uh, yeah, uh, we're looking for feedback. So anyone who's on our LinkedIn page in particular, we have a poll up right now to get your feedback, but send us whatever platform you're on, email, phone call, smoke signal, carrier pigeon, whatever you got. Let us know but your thoughts. Jovi has decided that um, she's going to hang out and uh, she's making... Destroy the set. Interesting noises and uh, remodeling the set. I think. <laughs> Let me get you back on thought. Is it helping? Hindering? A little. I like how there's a seagull. Oh, you wait. This is from my ambulance phase. We'll put this on our uh, on our mindfulness album. To be tracked for. Is that? Is there going to be a season of this where we like grow just our this. hair out it's and just we just? This. It's just this song at seven different speeds. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. That's very Seinfeldian. No, not so. I got a Seinfeld song in here. I got a very Seinfeld song in here. I don't remember what it's called, but I found it this morning and I was like, whoa. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I had so much fun making this stuff, man. It was just. Uh, yeah. It's bringing back a lot of cool memories. Oh. There it is. Oh, yeah. We should use this for our intro. Something. I don't I, appreciate the face you made when I said that. We, uh, <laughs> maybe we could make like an album like, uh, like Incredibad. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I could just like do spoken poetry and we'll put uh, uh, auto tune on it. Oh, I and dig that. And then I'll, let... I'll, uh, oh, my drive shut down. I'll, uh, I'll play something like this behind you. Dream, dream. <laughs> no? All right, listen. Let us, let us know in the comments if you would like to the Biz Dojo album. And I promise you sick beats from JP. Oh, album one, the busiest dojo, but like the, B-I-Z-Z-I-E-S-T, the busiest yeah, dojo. Yeah. Maybe we could get Bizarre to do a guest spot. 
I can't imagine he's up to much these days. <laughs> what you know? What, what kills me? I'm gonna play another one. Uh, what kills me is actually like my file naming convention mm. <laughs> for all of these files. Like, there's some stuff where, like, clearly I was just trying to save it so I could remember it. So, like, I would have stuff like August 16th, which is from August 16th, 2001. Do you do like the one, two, three thing? No, no, no. Okay. I usually don't. Usually I just pick a random word. Here's mm. August 16th, by the way. If you were wondering where my brain was at August 16th, 2001, this is it. So very bass drum heavy on August 16th, 2001. You know what's funny? That that time frame, August 2001, that's when I would have went to Edgefest with Blink-182. Just kind of full circle there. <laughs> but I've got stuff that's like, I have one that's called Crazy Horse. I have one that's called <laughs> Dody Dumb. Dody Dumb. Let me hear Dody Dumb. <laughs> Ho hum, ho hum. Oh, I should have called it ho hum, not do hum. <laughs> <laughs> and then I have one called Febtoba. So clearly, I had seen a Sean Connery on uh, Saturday Night Live. <laughs> Febtoba. <laughs> uh, there's some really good. I gotta listen to some of that again. Oh, I have one this? called Jerk Face. Let's hear it. What's Jerk Face? Well, this must have been like my prodigy. I, I never liked prodigy. That that could have been a song right there. Just me on repeat saying I never liked prodigy in auto tune over top of that. I, I never liked prodigy. 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 That's song one. <laughs> People would buy it too. They'd be like, you know, I'd never like Prodigy either, but this song is just hitting it. <laughs> well, I feel like we just had a dance party. Actually, it's Lyndon's birthday tomorrow, and he was hoping to have a dance party. So maybe you could just come DJ. Oh, yeah? it. You want me to DJ with <laughs> Scream Tracker and Impulse Tracker files? <laughs> yeah, like five 10 year olds in the basement, and you're DJing. This is a sweet MP3. It's not an MP3, this is a MIDI track. I don't even know what you're talking about, but yes. <laughs> you youngins. Oh, oh, well, you youngins. All you youngins. Old man JP is here to throw it down for everybody. Uh, all right. Well, maybe we'll outro with a song. Yes, please. And for those of you, um, thank you for tuning in. Chopping It Up is back. I don't know how often it'll be back. Maybe it'll be back every Tag week. What team, do you back again? Check yeah. it and let's begin. Party you got some men in black you could play. I don't know why. I just thought of that, but uh, that's came out of nowhere. Yeah. What? Well, what? The tag team, men in black. Yeah. 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 We're both wearing black. <laughs> this isn't black. This is gray. Yeah. This is black. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let us know. Let us know in the comments. Share this. Let us. What are we doing? Are we putting this on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, all the places? We'll face this right onto the book. Face this right or meta. We're gonna put it into the metaverse. Oh yes. 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 Maybe. We're gonna we're gonna put it on the app formerly known as Facebook. That might be its name soon if all of these companies who are claiming it's probably name. too long to put on um Insta, but we could probably YouTube it. I'll speed there. it up to like a thousand percent. Yeah, we're gonna have some fun with it. We're gonna have some fun. We're gonna finish the year strong. We wanna do some cool stuff. And we invite you to come along for the ride. 